What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Nick and I talk all about trading and investing and today we're talking about the US dollar versus the Canadian dollar. Now these two North American giants put up against each other offer some really unique trading uh, environments. And in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you guys, we're gonna look over the charts in just a moment, and we're gonna look at some ways to trade the dollar Canadian, uh, in my view, at a more successful rate. Before we look at the technicals and before we look at the nature of the chart and talk about trade setups there, let's talk about the two currencies individually. First of all, when we're looking at the US dollar from a fundamental perspective, the biggest thing that comes to mind is keeping tabs on what the Fed has to say. You already know our boy Jerome Powell has a big influence on what the US dollar and the stock market does. It can go up, it can go down, it can go sideways, but it is ultimately very much dependent on uh, what is being said by the Fed and more specifically at this time, the Fed Chairman Jerome Powell. So when we're looking at the US dollar, keeping tabs on what the Fed is doing, looking at tabs or keeping tabs on unemployment employment and GDP growth rates in the US, those are going to be things that are very, very important. And of course, the treasured uh, interest rates that are out there and keeping an eye on whether or not the Fed is trying to raise, lower or hold interest rates is going to be a big, big factor on the bullishness or bearishness on the US dollar. In contrast, let's look at the Canadian dollar. One thing you need to know, the first thing that I always keep an eye on when I'm talking about trading the Canadian dollar is what is the oil market up to? The Canadians are blessed with a fantastic reservoir of uh, natural materials and goods in their very, very large country. And one of the biggest things that they export is oil. So oil has a huge component, uh, is a huge component to their economy. So when we're looking at the oil market, the CAD is usually going to be somewhat correlated. If the oil market is improving and, and there's a big demand for oil, uh, then that is considered good for the Canadian currency and vice versa. If the uh, demand for oil is declining, that could be bad for the Canadian economy, which is largely correlated and built upon oil. Not only there are many other things that go into the Canadian economy, but oil is a factor. So keep in mind with that. Of course, everything else that I mentioned for the US, same thing with Canada. What's unemployment looking like? What are the interest rates looking like? Are they looking to raise or lower them? Uh, and you know you can keep tabs on that by looking at what Canada has to say in terms of what their expectations are. So these are some things that from a fundamental perspective, I like to keep in mind when I'm looking at the US dollar versus the Canadian dollar or trading either one of these currencies against anything else. So without further ado, let's go look at the charts and talk about some ways to actually trade dollar CAD from a technical perspective. All right, guys, so we're back on the charts. We're taking a look at USD versus the Canadian dollar. So as I mentioned, it's gonna be a big thing to keep an eye on the oil markets. Before we take a look at USD CAD too closely, let me show you guys uh, one of the ways to look at oil. You can type in WTI USD. Uh, this is one way to look at the oil price. And you can see that oil recently, at the time of making this video, has been on a very, very strong rise ever since the crash that we had in 2020. This in keeping this in mind is going to be very, very important based on what we said again about the Canadian economy. Uh, keeping this in mind is going to be very, very important. If this looks bullish, it might be a good thing to think about bullish opportunities on the CAD as well, right? Right now, we can see a nice a long term trend here to the upside on the daily chart ever since the bottom that we formed back in April of 2020. We've seen a steady rise on the oil market. That also bodes well for the Canadian currency. So let's go back to USD CAD real quick and let's see if this reminds you of anything. Oh, well, it's going down. Why is that? Well, it's actually because technically it is the Canadian dollar becoming more valuable because remember this is the USD versus the CAD. So what we're looking at here is we're actually looking at the CAD rising, but the US dollar falling, and that's why the currency pair is headed down. So in fact, lining this up with the uh, WTI USD, we can actually see something quite interesting. So we just looked at WTI USD and then we looked at USD CAD and we noticed that they were sort of doing the opposite of each other. And that makes sense because the CAD is getting stronger as the oil price is getting stronger, which just to make it more confusing causes USD CAD to go down. But I think this visual might also help you guys a little bit. So I added a correlation coefficient down here at the bottom and this shows us how correlated a market that we're looking at, dollar CAD, versus another market, 
WTI USD is. And what you'll notice is that there is a strong inverse correlation here. Why is that? Because as the US dollar, Canadian dollar goes down, that means the oil price is going up. I know that is still a bit confusing to the new traders out there, but what you should know is that a rising oil market is usually bullish for the CAD. And now we can see that the oil price as it goes up, the Canadian dollar versus the US dollar, the USD CAD moves down as people favor the CAD over the US dollar. Okay. Now, one more thing, I'll close that out. One more thing for us to look at before we go into the technicals too far is we should look at the rough movement of this market per day. And we can see that there is about an 87, 88 pip move per day on average on the dollar Canadian at the time of making this video. I encourage you, if you'd like to look at the average true range, you can apply this indicator on tradingview.com and set that up for yourself to see what it is at the time of watching this video. But for the last you know, several months, we've seen about a 75 to 90 pip range per day on average. So keep that in mind when placing your stop losses and looking for trades on the dollar cat. Okay, next, how do we actually look for trade setups on the dollar CAD and what should we be looking for? Going back to our fundamental idea really quick, if USD CAD is, if the US dollar and the Canadian dollar are both bullish or both bearish, the first thing we need to look at is possibilities of a range bound market. If both of these economies, both of these North American economies, sometimes they move together, sometimes they don't, but if they are both bullish or they are both bearish, it can often cause a market to trade sideways, right? Why would that make sense? Well, it's because we're crossing two currencies and if both of them are performing well or both of them are performing poorly relative to one another, they're probably not gonna be dominating or you know destroying the other one, right? They're just gonna be sort of back and forth. And in that case, maybe there's some range bound plays that could be had. I'll give you an example like back here here, you can see here's a range bound market that lasted many, many months on dollar CAD. The lower extremes got bought up and the upper extremes got sold into. It changed in 2020 as people drastically bought up the US dollar in favor of the Canadian dollar, which uh, is just to, to go to show generally what we should keep an eye on also is that in a heavy, heavy risk off or fearful market environment, people at least historically seem to favor the US dollar and they drop the CAD. Right, which also makes sense because oil prices usually drop as well in a slowing uh, economy. Okay, okay. So um, back to this: if things are looking both bullish for the U.S. dollar and the CAD, or both bearish, we could probably expect a range-bound market. However, if we see one dominating the other, like we have seen with the recovery phase, where people very much favor the CAD and very much anticipate more oil demand coming into play, which is good for the, the Canadian economy, we've seen this trend to the downside where there's been some really good moves to the downside to capture. So these are things to look out for. What is the story in markets right now? Until further notice, I am preferably a bull on the CAD over the dollar. Now, it doesn't mean I'm going to go buy everything uh, Canadian just because you know things look good, but it might give me a slight bias towards the sell side. And in that case, what I'm going to be looking for is to sell into supply. So how do we mark supply? Well, I have videos on this. If you want to go watch a full video on marking supply and demand zones, you can look up supply and demand trader neck. I'll pop up a, a picture of what the thumbnail looks like and you can go find that one for yourself. But a very quick version is to look for key levels where price basically reversed strongly. We can mark out a couple here. Here's a level of, de of uh, supply that I'd be watching for and a recent level of, of course, demand. Now I'm not going to be buying demand uh, if I have a strong bias towards the CAD, I'm going to be looking to sell into supply on the dollar CAD because I'm I, I'm favoring sort of that uh, that Canadian dollar versus the U.S. dollar. So in that case, let's say we got a little bit of a rally here, right? Which we're starting to see. If price were to come up to a level that I like, maybe I look for an opportunity to sell into that trend and to ride it further. My style as a trader might be different than yours, but I am usually approaching the market with a trend following sort of perspective. My favorite styles of trades are where we have one currency where I am bullish on and one currency where I am bearish on based on my analysis, right? So for example, maybe I'm bullish on the CAD, bearish on the dollar, and I'm looking for trend continuation setups here. 
Like I said earlier, if this market goes into a range bound, if the US dollar gets very, very strong and we see this market continue to range, then in that case, I could possibly be looking to sell the supply levels and buy the demand levels and just play the back and forth until that changes. An example of that sort of would look like this area here. Um, that would be a range bound sort of area. And you can use the technicals and the fundamentals to sort of identify that. Usually you can see it in the technicals as well if you start to see you know, supply levels being held very nicely and demand levels also being respected as well. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, as I usually have on my chart, I have the 50 and the 200 period SMA. We're looking at the daily chart, but some of the same concepts can be applied on the lower time frames. We could look at um, you know, the four hour chart, which is one of my favorite time frames to trade, uh, and still look for levels of supply if you're a bear like me looking for possibilities to short this in a pullback like that. And of course, going back to our initial thought process, which is keep an eye on interest rates, inflation rates, that sort of thing to possibly make a judgment as to the, the fundamental bias or direction you think a market is going to go. I hope this has been helpful to you on Dollar CAD. For those of you guys who tra do trade this, I hope this, this sort of cleared up some of the questions you may have had. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like it down below. And hey, if you made it to the end of the video, comment that you made it to the end and I'll try and heart your comment. I do appreciate those of you guys who support the content and stick around for the entire video. Thank you so much. We'll see you back next time. Guys, thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to like the video down below because if you don't, you're statistically 84.72% more likely to blow an account in the next 48 hours. Don't ask me how, don't ask me why, that's just facts. If you enjoyed that video and you wanna see more free content here on YouTube, I'll be popping up some videos on the screen now. Go ahead and click anything that looks interesting to you and thank you so much.